We're back. McLean, have a great show. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Oh, you know what this is all about. Some evenings. And when they point to the sky, and they say War Eagle. Well, it's on, and you better be ready. Jordan Hare at night, where magic has happened, where dreams have come true in burnt orange and navy blue. And the Auburn Tigers, they took number one Georgia to the limit here on this field this season. They've got a salty and talented defense and a crowd of supporters roaring who always believe. Welcome to ESPN College Football Primetime presented by IHG Hotels and Resorts. Number 13 Ole Miss with a chance to play for it all in the SEC, trying to stay the course for a very special season. But this hurdle to overcome on the road against Auburn. Joe Tessitore and Jesse Palmer with you. And Lane Kiffin, Ole Miss head coach, he mentioned it to us all week long. He said, forget what you saw last week when Auburn was at LSU. Because when you come to this place, when you're under these lights, and that War Eagle is circling, it's different. Now, Ole Miss has a whole lot of talent, though. They do. And listen, they're one lost team. They're right in the thick of the SEC West race. They do need help from Alabama, but they don't have to worry about what's going on in Tuscaloosa, Joe. They've got business right here at Jordan Hare Stadium, where they've lost eight of their last nine. Now, Ole Miss is in this position because of their offense. They're scoring 42 points a game. They can light it up. They've got a little bit of a three headed monster. Jackson Dart's been terrific running and throwing the ball at quarterback. Quinshawn Judkins and Ulysses Bentley are about as talented a one two punch you'll find at running back in the nation. But Ole Miss is banged up a little bit at the receiver spot. They're going to have to be able to run the football against this Auburn defense tonight that did struggle stopping the run last week against LSU. Katie George, we spent a lot of time with Hugh Freeze, the head coach of Auburn, yesterday, and his message this week comes with a change. Yeah, it does, Tess. For the first time in Hugh Freeze's coaching career, he made a change to his practice schedule this week. After three losses, he said, I just wanted to do something different. I wanted to raise the intensity later on in the week. So the normal Thursday walkthrough was moved to Thursday afternoon, and then he had his guys go through a full practice on Friday afternoon. He told me pregame, I absolutely loved what I saw from my guys. There was a sense of urgency now we just have to have it translate to the football field he also said when I got the job at Auburn it was because of my past offensive success look for him to be a part of the play calling tonight Tess uh, Katie his past success of course an interesting twist with the coaching dynamic here Ole Miss hasn't won at Auburn since 2015 the lone win in the last 20 years the head coach was Hugh Freeze now on the other side Auburn coach Freeze going after a big upset tonight when we return after a very short break. Loveliest village on the plains as you're watching the SEC on ESPN. Joe Tessitore, Jesse Palmer, Katie George, a night under the lights here at Auburn. Ole Miss hasn't posted back to back wins over Auburn since 1952. Auburn won the toss. They elect to receive. Auburn with that offense that has had some struggles, especially passing the ball out there right away. Through four games against Power Five teams, Jesse, Auburn's averaging only 98 yards passing 
per game. Against Power 5 opponents, you're right. And they're very one-dimensional right now. It hasn't just been one thing, Joe. It's been quarterbacks missing. It's been receivers not getting open. And look who takes the field first for Auburn at quarterback. It's Robbie Ashford, the Oregon transfer who had been a backup and been playing in spot duty. He's the more dynamic runner, but Hugh Freeze choosing to go with a 6-3 quarterback to open this game up. Robbie Ashford gets the start over Peyton Thorne. And he's going to run it to open up the game, and he's tripped up, immediately tripped up by Prince. I expected him to play more in this game just based on what he did last week against LSU. He moved the offense, running and throwing. He was excellent in the red zone, but throughout the year, Joe, in spot duty, they haven't really let him throw the ball vertically down the field. You just wonder if this is Hugh Freeze here trying to spark the offense, try to finally find balance. And I wonder if they'll take the training wheels off of Ashford and let him throw it a little bit vertically. Loss of two on that first play. Ashford is going to dump it down underneath to his running back, Hunter, and he gets out just beyond the 30-yard line. It'll be third down from there. Perkins with the tackle. That's a big completion, though, early in this game for Ashford because I know it didn't get tons of yards, but it keeps the third down manageable. And this is a place where, for Ashford, his legs really become a factor. If they're throwing and nothing's open, he's got the athleticism and the ability to take off running to go get it. Third down and five, four-man rush, and he gets it complete for a first down as he connects with Tyler Fromm. So Robbie Ashford gets the start and moves the chains. Well, it's a nice job by Fromm, just kind of curling up right behind a linebacker who's going to vacate there, that defensive end dropping in zone coverage. It's an easy throw, an easy completion, but again, Keeping third downs manageable, Joe, that's going to be huge for this Auburn offense in this game. We know how much they've struggled throwing it. It's a good-looking first drive of the game. Here's Hunter. And Hunter is tackled for a loss, as that was Jean-Baptiste getting in immediately. I think if you're Ole Miss in this game, you feel like if you stop the run, you win the game. And you know that Auburn's going to try to run it between the tackles. They're going to go sideline to sideline. So the speed at linebacker that time by Jean-Baptiste, great job getting the tackle for a loss of four yards. Second and 14. Ashford pumps, chased, and taken down. Sacked by Perkins, the true freshman. He leads all SEC freshmen now with four and a half sacks. Well, that time Auburn had a jet sweep coming this way. They had a guard pulling this way, but they had nobody there for four who just kind of like throttled down a little bit at the end of the line of scrimmage. When he saw that it was passed, then he took off. This guy is talented, Joe. True freshman. He was the 18th rated overall prospect coming out of high school. He's got tremendous speed and gets his fourth sack of the season. And this is the spot that Auburn does not want to be in for down and distance at all. Third and 14. They came in 110th in the nation, third down. Ashford going to try to do it with his legs and nearly split defenders. He's a yard short of the line of game. And I wonder if Hugh Freeze is going to go here after that big run. I, I, you want to be aggressive. He's coming out starting Ashford. I think they're going to go. They're going to try to take advantage of this home crowd and get some momentum here at midfield with a very dynamic runner in Robbie Ashford. Fourth down. And keep in mind, Hugh Freeze turned to us yesterday and said, when Ashford's in the game, I will be calling those plays. He's the one who designed the package preseason, understands the vernacular of it, and he's getting back to what he's always done. Hugh Freeze, the head coach, play calling for Robbie Ashford out there as quarterback. And they're going to use a timeout. So we'll take a break. And it's Auburn facing a fourth down when we return. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by IHG Hotels and Resorts. 18 hotel brands, one loyalty program. Download the app and in part by Burger King. 
Some of the scenes yesterday from both the bald eagle and the golden eagle that fly high above Jordan hair before a home game. Uh, listen, it is still one of the great scenes in American sports, isn't it? It absolutely is. And I get some momentum going early. So here is Ashford on fourth down. Can he get back there? He's trying to reach out and spin, but it looked like he was wrapped up by Coleman. Kari Coleman with a great play to get into the backfield for Ole Miss. As you see, Pete Golden, the defensive coordinator, and his linebacker got there, Jesse. He's fast. The TCU transfer, tremendous speed off the edge. He's just going to come flying in. There's a backside tight end that's looking to get a steal, but no one's able to get a, a block on 23, and he gets the tackle for loss. That's his 32nd career tackle for loss, which is most among active players right now in the FBS. Huge stop defensively for Ole Miss's defense. And now the Ole Miss offense takes over at the Auburn 48-yard line to start the game. And I wonder if they'll take a shot. Oftentimes in sudden change, coordinators and play callers like to get the ball deep down the field. Instead, it's Judkins, and he's wrapped up and driven back by Justin Rogers. It's been a lot of fun watching Jackson Dart play this year. He is an outstanding dual threat quarterback. Joe, he's been making really good decisions, throwing the football, but also in the run pass option game. And as a result right now, 323 total yards a game. That's second in the SEC, only behind Jaden Daniels. Number seven overall in major college football. As there was movement up front, pre-snap against Ole Miss. Illegal snap on the offense, number 54, five-yard penalty that remains second down. Caleb Warren, the starting center, who now makes his 38th straight start. And that's a big moment here for this Ole Miss offense early, being gifted the football back here at midfield. You've got to pay this off now. You're playing in a hostile environment. It's important to turn this into points early in this game. Second and 15, Dart being chased. He pumps and then dives ahead. You'll very rarely see Jackson Dart slide. <laughs> no, he's playing. He's like a linebacker in a quarterback's body. He's always going north-south. He might try to hurdle here, but he doesn't have a lot of wiggle, that's for sure. But he definitely does bring a physicality to the running game, and it's very, very odd to see that at the quarterback position. But you just saw in that last play, Joe, his ability to extend and take off. Third down, he's been great this year doing the same thing. They're down in seven, keep it on the ground with Judkins, and Judkins will get the first down and an explosive play for the Reds. And the tempo, I will see something that's very big with Lane Kiffin and his schemes. Holding on the offense. Oh. Black came in late and they walk it back. That is a huge penalty. Would have been a first down for Ole Miss there early. They popped Judkins into the second level. That's a big break that Auburn's defense needed early. And that's the kind of look that Lane gives when you erase a 24-yard run. I think it was their left guard, Quincy McGee, just getting caught up there at the point of attack. Now sets up third in California. Third down and 17. Pressure up the middle against Dart. Downfield he goes. Look for the back shoulder. And a flag comes in as Franklin was covered by Pritchett downfield. Pass interference on the defense, number 36. A 15 yard penalty will be enforced from the previous spot, and it carries an automatic first down. They're calling that on Jalen Simpson, who's the safety, and I don't even think he was close to the football. That's him, 36, breaking on the ball. I think he must have wanted to say one. Nehemiah Pritchett, it's a missed ID. But two bad penalties now, Joe, in consecutive plays. One by Ole Miss a moment ago, and then Auburn gives it right back to him. Now there are some injury updates of note. 
Key among them is Jordan Watkins is available but we haven't seen him out there yet the excellent receiver for Ole Miss. Meanwhile the Auburn defense gets two key players back. And there is Watkins who suffered a hand injury during the bye week 11 days ago. We're visiting with him pregame he said I want to give it a go Lane Kiffin felt a little more concerned. They go with the jet motion with Wade and Wade backs in after a two yard gain but then driven back by Larry Nixon. Well Joe the injury to Jordan Watkins is a big one for Ole Miss because he is their best receiver. He's their best deep threat and he's been their most reliable guy on third down. You see referees checking the hand. That's the cause of the injury suffered during the bye week. Second down pitch to Bentley had to make a man in the backfield miss and then wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage Ron Roberts defense pursuing immediately against Ulysses Bentley getting some penetration up front that's going to be critical for this front seven of Auburn there's Ron Roberts defensive coordinator big hallmark of his throughout his career has been taking the football away Auburn's been terrific at that this year with 11 turnovers something to keep an eye on here in this game and here's that crowd Joe Jordan Hare at night third down third down and seven. Motion everywhere on the left side. False start on the offense number 86. What a change when you come home. A week ago was Ole Miss on the road at Tiger Stadium having to deal with it. Now it's Ole Miss coming to this place. I played here twice. Trust me. <laughs> I know all about it. Your first start. Your first start in college My football first start was here, right? was here. These are some of the best fans in all of college football that they show up. They get here early. They are loud. And their team, they just feed off of it. Third Ole Miss penalty on this drive alone that started with a short field. Third and 12. Dart. Pocket collapses, chased out of it, directing traffic. He's going to run. A flag is down as he makes his way inside the 25, but they may be walking this back again. Holding on the offense, number 57. That two yard penalty will be enforced from the spot of the foul with the replay of third down. It's Mike Pettis, the right tackle. He's working against Jalen McLeod on the right side. and. Great job in coverage by Auburn's defense. This is where the hold's going to take place, but there was nothing open downfield, nowhere for Jackson Dart to go. And that hold really is what helped and allowed him to get to the outside to extend the play. And now here's another third and long situation right at midfield. Auburn's defense just has to play this clean. Get back in zone coverage, keep your eye on the quarterback, keep the football in front of you and rally to it. They're on the other side of the 50 on a drive that started on Auburn's 48. Four penalties will do that to you. Third and 22, so they keep it on the crown with Judkins, and Judkins has a chance as he tries to tiptoe the sideline to get there. And Lane Kiffin said, this is where we need to put it. Linesman says otherwise. Great job by Caleb Warren, the center. He does a, he's able to climb up into the second level right here and get a block on this linebacker. And that's what put Judkins into the second level of this defense. So here's fourth down as Lane is wont to do. 75% on the year fourth down for Ole Miss. Judkins easily gets it and more all the way down inside the 15 yard line. It was third and forever. Auburn. Handed to Quinshot two times and he got it. Yeah, Auburn's defense wasn't able to keep contained that time. Jalen McLeod had the outside. He was locked up with Caden Priestcorn, the tight end, and really nice job of vision that time by Judkins bouncing that thing to the outside. Auburn didn't convert a fourth down. Ole Miss did. And now because of it, the Rebs are sitting right on the doorstep looking to cash in. Bentley probing and not finding much at all. Only a couple of yards as Larry Nixon was involved again with the tackle. This is a place where Auburn's defense outside of the LSU game really has played well. Down in their own red zone with their backs against the wall, allowing opponents to score on 78% of their drives. That's the best in the SEC. So field goals, not touchdowns. Big key for the Tigers here playing at home.
Bentley motions back in, and Dart runs counter to it. But down the line pursuit was Cam Riley. Now setting up a critical third down without their best receiver, Jordan Watkins, in the game. So somebody else has to step up now. Who can be dependable? Who can be the go-to guy for Lane Kiffin, for Jackson Dart in these critical down and distances? And heading into that end zone where the band plays and the student section roars. Third and seven. Look at the time Dart has to the end zone. Touchdown Ole Miss. Franklin secures it. It was Zakari Franklin, the UTSA transfer, doing an awesome job on a double move. He's out here wide. He's just going to turn and stop, and then he's going to go again into the end zone. The guy covering him just thought he was just kind of throttling down. Great job changing the pace. And that now he's 38th touchdown in college football, most among active players. Davis caps it with the PAT. It was a nine play drive, went 48 yards, had to overcome a whole lot of penalties. But in the end, Jackson Dart to Zakari Franklin. Seven zip Ole Miss to start this game. You know, on that nine play scoring drive by Ole Miss, there was only one pass. It was the touchdown. It was the legs of Quinshawn Judkins who did damage, especially the big plays on third down, Katie. Yeah, Tess, the bye week came at a good time for Junkins. He's been banged up this season, but he told me the recovery time he got last week was crucial. This is a guy who found immediate success running the football as a true freshman. It's been a harder feat this season. But Junkins said patience is key, not overreacting to 40 or 50 yard games, remaining level headed and, you know, seizing the opportunities when they come. He says he's finally finding his footing again. Look out if that's the case, guys. Let's go to the studio to Matt. All right, Matt, look forward to that. Drake made with two touchdown passes early on. We saw Robbie Ashford start the game, and now Peyton Thorne, who has been the starting quarterback all season long, comes in for the second series. And Hunter will take the carry straight ahead, and he's able to get it to the outside for a gain of nine and a half. What do we make of Ashford starting Thorne coming in now? Well, at least for Peyton Thorne watching him this year, he's gotten the majority of the reps. It's been some good. He's done some good things with his legs, but it hasn't been great throwing the ball. Location has been a problem, and you get the feeling, Joe, to win, he's going to have to be able to fit the football into some small windows tonight. Had a man right in his face, and he's able to tuck it and run for the first down. After last week, a very regrettable night at LSU. Only had 12 completions for 102 yards. But he can do stuff like that, oh, Joe. He's and, and I never saw that when he was at Michigan State. Guy had 26 starts there, only 270 rushing yards. He was never able to run designed runs. Of course, he was handing out to Kenneth Walker. But they've, they've allowed him to do that this season and be creative. And here he is, the leading rusher on the third best running offense in the SEC. Had a 61-yarder against Georgia here. Going to pull it from Hunter. And shows you some of that grittiness as he was tackled by John Saunders. Kind of get the feeling this is what Hugh Freeze wants to do in this game. Kind of wants to slow it down, yes. stay on the field, run the ball, high percentage throws, maintain possession, bleed the clock, keep Jackson Dart and all those playmakers from Ole Miss on the sidelines. Second and six, Thorne trying to tell Hunter to get out there and block as he just runs back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down from there. That's been a big problem. It's part of the reason why they've struggled so much throwing at Joe. They just don't get guys open. 
you don't see guys at the receiver position separating very, very much. And I think that's the one big position moving forward for Auburn they have to get better at, at wide receiver. And certainly that's been a big effort for Hugh Freeze and his coaching staff in recruiting. And Hugh Freeze is very honest in saying we inherited a talent gap against many of the teams we're playing. It is most conspicuous when you see these wide receivers against SEC DBs. We're going to take a short break as there's an Auburn player down. The college football playoff semifinals and the college football playoff national championship on ESPN. Joe, Jesse, and Katie back with you here as Auburn facing a third and six. Connor Lewin at center as Avery Jones walked off the field. This is Hunter straight ahead. Jarquez Hunter. Oh, how about it here on the Plains? A 53-yard touchdown. All the criticism was about the passing game. Let me tell you something. These Tigers can run the ball, they Jesse. Sure can. And that is great vision by Jarquez Hunter. Seeing the cutback. This is a zone that's supposed to go right. We're kind of at a distance here. The entire defense moving that way, which allows Hunter to kind of lean back here, cut left, and then you see the speed. He's always been a very physical runner inside the tackles, but one thing he's really worked on this offseason, open field running ability, and he shows you the breakaway speed. This guy's had a tremendous career at Auburn, and they come up with a huge explosive play to recapture some of the momentum here at Jordan Hare. Speedy freshman backer for Ole Miss Perkins was the backside backer on that, and Hunter just broke that tackle and then hit fifth gear, and this game is tied up 7 7. Team practiced hard on Friday. First time Hugh Freeze has ever done that in his coaching career. And they blocked like it moments ago, didn't they? Physical team showing off that run game. Lane Kiffin's an elite play caller for Ole Miss Joe. One of the best things he does, I think, is window dressing. This is back against LSU. This is a bread and butter play they have. They're pulling two linemen, misdirection, toss it the other way to Judkins, and they get a nice gain. Very next game against Arkansas here in a three-by-one formation. They fake the toss. It sucks up linebackers. You got Trey Harris hiding in the H position on a wheel for a big play. And then later in the same game, going back to a two-by-two -two set, you fake the toss. It draws the linebacker up, and this time it's Watkins in the slot on the smash so Auburn in this game has to know they're going to see a few wrinkles a few layers to plays that they've seen all season long from this Ole Miss offense just as a note remember we are yet to see Watkins in this game tonight as Bentley patiently looks for the hole and then is driven back he's dealing with a hand injury the wide receiver that he suffered during the bye week and before that bye week Jesse Watkins was the seventh leading receiver in the SEC well, just a comfort zone between him and Jackson Darton. So other players have to step up. You saw Zakari Franklin do it on the last possession. Second and eight. Right wow. into the pocket of Priestcorn. Jackson Dart couldn't have placed it there any better. Priestcorn's out there one on one against Eugene Asante on a wheel route. And what a dime by Jackson Dart just dropping that in the bucket and a great 100 stab. And then tempo to Bentley, who's wrapped up and tackled for a loss as Falk makes the tackle. Look at this throw, though, to Priestcorn. I mean, he had a guy on a post route, which I thought he was going to throw it open for a touchdown, it looked like. Instead, he goes to the wheel to the tight end. <laughs> Linebacker's got his head turned. Just look what I found. Great catch by the Memphis transfer tight end.
Dart being chased and Dart trying to get that corner and he makes the most of it sliding down just short of the line. The game will be third and short from there. Joe, one of the things I really like about Jackson Dart is he's ready to go at the opening kick. This guy comes out of the gate in the first quarters of games and he is firing, completing 76% of his throws, six TD passes in the first quarter. Doesn't take this guy long to get oiled up and ready to roll. They're down in three. Bentley stacked up. It's going to be fourth down. But be ready for Lane just looking into that play sheet and keeping things rolling here. Well, he's gone for it 16 times on fourth down heading into this game. This is something he loves to do. It puts a lot of trust in Jackson Dart, a quarterback, to make the right decisions and run pass options. And the big guy, number 89, J.J. Pegues, who started his career here at Auburn, played tight end, played defensive line, plays D-line for Ole Miss. He's in the game now on offense for an extra big body. You'll see him tight end, top of the screen. Fourth and one. Fakes the short pitch and has it. Jackson Dart breaking free. Touchdown, Rips. A 29-yard touchdown run from the quarterback on fourth down. He is a strong runner, and he just showed it there. Downhill, right against the middle of this Auburn defense. As Davis adds the extra point. Well, there's a lot of eye candy and a lot of misdirection in this offense. They're going to fake the pitch this way, and it's going to draw defenders that way. And then Dart's able to just head up right inside the middle. You see the fake jet sweep motion? There's the crease. You're pulling the backside guard and the tight end. We've seen Jackson Dart do this. Remember, 68-yard touch or run he had against Georgia Tech earlier in the season. This guy gets in the second level, man. He is gone. What a beautiful block by Caden Prescorn. Lane loves that. But as he was able to come through there, his tight end, who had a marvelous catch earlier, sealed things, created that lane. Well, it's big for them, Joe, to be able to get this running game established because of some of the injuries they've had at wide receiver. And already we've seen Quinshot Junkins go off on the first drive. Jackson Dart now doing his part as well. And that young man, Jesse, playing through grief, mourning the loss of his father, Aiden Prescorn, his father passed away a week ago. He's an older player. He's a father himself, about to get married, transfer from Memphis, and he came up big on that last drive. Coming up next Saturday, we want to remind you, it is Colorado and Coach Prime taking on number 25 UCLA, 7.30 Eastern on ABC. Rose Bowl will be sold out for that UCLA. I like that matchup too, Joe, because a lot of people obviously know about Shador Sanders by now at Colorado, but Dante Moore, the true freshman at UCLA, very, very talented dual threat as well. That'll be fun. Guy who was in the midst of so many recruiting battles, the quarterback who starred in high school in Detroit made his way out west. Batty as he takes it ahead to the 29 yard line. Jackson Dart getting all the accolades on the other side. It was an entertaining first quarter as we get these final seconds coming to an end. Franklin had the touchdown. Hunter busted free for a 53 yarder and then moments ago Jackson Dart darting through the middle of that defense 14 to 7 Ole Miss at the end of one. Coach Reese, you have 102 yards on offense. What did you like about the start from that group? Well, I love this atmosphere at Jordan Hare, number one. This is the greatest college environment to play in. Um, hey, we didn't get that fourth and one. You know, I'd like to see what we've done. And then we, we've had two drives and a touchdown on one, but they've had two drives and two touchdowns. So we got to stop their explosive plays on defense, and, and uh, we've got to continue to convert third and fourth down. I think that's going to be the stat for us. Thank you. Thank you. You freeze as we get ready for quarter number two. Patti can't find much there. Isaac Ukwo 
with the tackle. Of course, Hugh Freeze, the former Ole Miss head coach, beat Nick Saban twice when he was there in Oxford. You know, he played Ole Miss when he was the head coach of Liberty. He said, listen, that's helpful this week. Just get all that emotion out of the way before you get to this matchup. I think one thing he wanted to see from his team is just more effort. They were so yes. ready to turn the page after that LSU game. And, Joe, to me, early in this one, at least it looks like they're playing with more fire. Third down, Peyton Thorne as he drives the ball incomplete, trying to connect with Camden Brown. Prince was there defensively. Nice job by Prince there, just defending the spot route, you know, and it's a route that the timing has to be perfect if you're going to complete that throw or putting it on his body. But Prince, who's got six career picks, he's been around this game a while. He just kind of sits in the hip pocket right there. He just gets able to get the right arm in to knock it down. Good, clean play. Now setting up a punt. Oscar Chapman on to punt away. Had a 71-yard punt against Georgia earlier this year. First punt of the game, the fair catch at around the 31. Tomorrow, Sunday NFL countdown, Tua and Jalen, before they square off in Philly, how their bond was formed as teammates at Bama. Bama, of course, with a win today against Tennessee. Big win. And the story of Lamar Jackson, the wedding crasher. That's 10 a.m. Eastern. And then Monday Night Football is the Niners and the Vikings from Minnesota. That's 8 Eastern on ABC and ESPN. And the Mannings will be on E2 this week. Brock Purdy's got a rebound. That offense, right? A little bit banged up now after that loss against that defense from the Cleveland Browns. Interesting to see what they do. There is the Golden Eagle who flew tonight selfie before this game. Eagles. Selfie with the Eagles, a classic. Got to get his attention, though. He's, you can't take it until he's looking. Nobody tells the Eagle what to do. <laughs> Flags come in with movement on the Ole Miss side again. False start on the offense, number 78. It's a five-yard penalty that remains first down. Yeah, the noise is playing a role in this one. We've seen a couple times Ole Miss's offensive line has had a hard time hearing the snap count and hearing the cadence. That's Jeremy James that time, the right guard, a guy that has 43 consecutive starts. So it impacts everybody, people. It's not just true freshmen up front playing in this big moment. It's veterans, too. Yeah, he's their most talented old lineman. He has played nearly every position on the line, and that's five penalties now for Ole Miss. Dart able to get it complete to Wade. Love the timing on the dig route there by Jackson Dart. Taking his steps, there's one hitch, keeps the, the safety in the middle of the field before driving the ball to Wade. Judkins, you see that extra effort as he pushes the pile right through Marcus Harris, the outstanding defensive tackle, and that's a first down for Ole Miss. And you're pulling your 360-pound right tackle there, Micah Pettis. It's a big part of, of Lane Kiffin's offense when they run the ball. They're always pulling linemen. It's amazing, though, how many big guys they have that can move up front. Dart, a lot of time, and that ball is intercepted. That is Kaufman on the return. Donovan Kaufman with the big return. And Ole Miss picked off and Auburn back in business. It's just a poor throw by Dart because he's got Franklin in the deep crossing route. This ball just needs to get thrown out in front of him. Instead, it's behind. Tips lead to picks, and it's the Vandy transfer, Donovan Kaufman, coming up with a big takeaway. We talked about it early, Joe. This defense has been outstanding all season long, getting turnovers and takeaways. Second in the conference with 11 coming into the game, and another big play now, getting this crowd riled up, and they are in business deep in Ole Miss territory. Because of a 43-yard return by Kaufman. Play good defense. Find some turnovers, have the crowd play a role. That's one of the formulas that was talked about this week after they have the night they want to have. Robbie Ashford back in the game. And Hunter back doing his thing as he lowers the shoulder against Santaran Perkins. And one of the interesting stories in this game, Joe, is that Olmus doesn't turn it over very often, and Auburn's been awesome at taking the football away. That time, a massive, massive play by Kaufman, putting Robbie Ashford, who's now back on the field for Auburn, in great field position. He started the game for the Tigers. Second and four. Hunter, as he is ripped back, just thrown back that time. 
As it was Jeremiah Jean Baptiste and Jared Ivey combining to make the tackle. And here comes a third and short, Jesse. Yeah, it's a lot to ask for Ole Miss's defense because Auburn's got five different guys that have at least 150 rushing yards. It's not just quarterbacks and Peyton Thorne and Ashford, but they've got three running backs that can get it done as well. And they're going to need all of it. They're going to need conventional handoffs, QB runs, design scrambles, jet sweeps to get it done on the ground here against Ole Miss. Two tight ends and third and two with Hunter as the featured back. Ashford's going to keep it, and Ashford's inside the 10. Turns the corner, going for that pylon. And he's going to be marked down just short. Well, Kyrie Coleman has to do a better job at linebacker defending the zone read. You're going to crash here, but you've got to get outside and replace that in case Ashford decides to keep the football. You see how he got drawn down inside? Ashford's just too athletic and too fast, and he'll take advantage every time. And now the whistles blow as the officials may take a look at the end of that play. The field that the runner was short of the goal line. That play is under video review. So they're going to review to see if Ashford was able to get to that goal line, get to that pylon. Let's see. Perfect opportunity for the pylon cam right here. Here he is working his way out. Oof. Kind of going down. When does the knee or elbow touch? Does the ball touch the pylon before any of his arms or, or knees go down? I think the Is right the ball hand to the outside the, of the pylon. I think the right hand touched the pylon first. Watch the ball, though. If the ball is outside the line. And you can't see the knee at that point. Well, the call in the field was that he was down, so you need indisputable video evidence to overturn this call. And I just wonder if the right hand hitting the pylon first puts him out of bounds. Watch the ball, though. The ball is on the outside hand, not that inside hand that makes contact with the pylon. So the ruling on the field is that they marked him down short of the goal line. After review, the ruling on the field stands. It's first down. And I think they got that one right, so it is first and goal. What a great sequence for Auburn, though. Getting the turnover long. Pays it off on a zone read run. To put him in position to tie this thing up. Jackson Dart looks on through that ball a little bit behind. It was tipped. 43 yard return. And now they switch up the quarterbacks. Peyton Thorne comes in after Robbie Ashford just had recent success but they go with a jumbo look as well as Muskrat one of the offensive tackles is lined up in that loaded backfield Thorne's going to split out for the Wildcat for Hunter with an offensive lineman in front of him all too easy Jarquez Hunter his second rushing touchdown Here's the guy that started it all, Donovan Kaufman. Had the interception and the big return. What did Lane Kiffin warn about when you come down here to Jordan Hare at night? Don't think about what you saw with this team against LSU. You know they're going to have juice. You know they're going to be ready. And this defense is playing some feisty ball. And then Hunter, his second of the night. And Robbie Ashford, a lot to celebrate. We're tied up down here at the loveliest village on the plains. ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by IHG Hotels and Resorts. Here at Jordan Hare, just to the side of Central Campus on Magnolia Ave and Thatch. And a beautiful, and I mean absolute beautiful SEC weekend here in Auburn, Alabama. Let's go to the studio and Matt.
Jordan Travis only with 25 yards passing early on in that game. Yeah, and he's healthy. Johnny Wilson, they got him back at wide receiver, too. They got their left tackle back, and Duke's been playing most of their games this year at home. Now they go on the road to Doe Campbell. Mike Elko's squad looking good early. So well coached in that turnaround that he's provided. Chutkins as he was brought down by Keontae Scott and Keontae Scott is back and he is their juice guy defensively and he's a guy that can cover in the slot that is a huge get back for Auburn on defense because when he was out with an ankle injury there were teams like Texas A&M and Georgia and LSU attacking them in the passing game down the middle of the field getting zero back on the field now for Ron Roberts in this defense is massive second and five dart and he takes a hit as it'll be third down and a long two. That was Pritchett who came up defensively against Dart. And I, I'm amazed that Jackson Dart has not missed more time just based on the way he runs the football. Virtually it feels like every time this guy takes the field, his helmet's getting knocked off at some point because of runs like that. Empty look here as Judkins is in the slot to the right. Third down and three. A pitch and catch, and that is incomplete. That was broken up at the last possible second by DJ James and Scott. And Scott getting in there as well in the coverage, trying to knock that thing away. It looked like the football made it through, but it was Scott at the last second that was able to get his hand in there on Trey Harris and knock it out. That's the coverage we're talking about. That's what Auburn had been lacking in their last three games. But th this defense in their past defense in zone coverage and man is entirely different. Now getting zero back in the slot. What is this? A punt from Ole Miss? <laughs> What's going on? Frazier Mazin, a six foot five punter from Brisbane, Australia. I feel like everybody's got an Australian punter. Oh, of course. The pro, pro Kick Academy down there. Take all those Aussie players when they're 25 years old and say, How would you like a ticket to the States? Get yourself a scholarship. Maybe make it to the NFL. And the long line of Aussie specialists at Ole Miss continues. And as Coyne Moore is driven back inside the 20-yard line, down to the 15 where he attempts the return, but outside the numbers, right near the hash for Mazin, a very good punt of 53 yards. You know, guys, Robbie Ashford said he doesn't really know how to describe his role right now, and he's not all that concerned trying to define it. He said it comes down to preparing to start or just being ready when he's asked to go into the game. He said early on it was difficult not knowing if or when he takes snaps. Now he's more used to the back and forth with Peyton Thorne. He says, I just want to provide a spark and extend plays for my team. And that's what we get, Katie, is back and forth as Ashford started, and now Thorne is in as the quarterback. He's going to get it to his tight end, Fairweather, and he has chopped down a good defensive play by Aishim Young. Well, Katie, I, I can appreciate Washington. how Robbie Ashford feels because during my time at Florida, I split reps with Doug Johnson and Rex Grossman, and it's really important when you play in a system like this that you, you don't get too hot and too cold. You can't be a rhythm guy. You have to just go out on the field when your number's called and be ready to perform. You never know when that is going to happen, but it definitely is difficult for both Robbie Ashford and Peyton Thorne. Second and six, Cat Blitz off the edge against the run, and with that, Hunter is tracked down. It was Walton as the backside corner coming straight in and making the tackle. Well, it's a great job there dialing it up by Pete Golding, a defensive coordinator. This is a defense, they don't blitz often, but when they do, stuff seems to go right. And you see number six there off the edge, and that speed able to track down Hunter from behind was Amari Walton, and now, that sets up third and long. This has been a danger zone for Auburn's offense because of their inability to throw consistently. Third down and 10. Thorne trying to extend the play, running out of options, and then run down as he went to the sideline as that was Sistrunk chasing Thorne. It was a nice job by Sistrunk that time. Just watching the quarterback's eyes. He had dropped in the middle of the field and was able to use his speed to go get him. He was the SEC Defensive Player of the Week after a big game against Arkansas their last time out. Forces a punt. Yeah. 
It's the second three and out for Auburn as Chapman will drive this ball downfield. Wade from the 21. Good balance. Look at this. Nice return for Dayton Wade. Eight and a half minutes until we get to Matt and the guys. Spectacular scene here in Auburn, Alabama. Samford Hall and that famed clock tower. More to come after this. Jesse, you think about Jordan Hare magic through yeah. the years. I mean, literally some of the greatest moments in the sport have happened here. Punt, Bama, punt back in 72. They were down late in the Iron Bowl. They win it. The prayer at Jordan Hare, 2013. Nick Marshall, Ricardo Lewis. And then, of course, the all-timer, the kick six. But something about this place. Yeah, you're right, Joe. I mean, listen, home field advantage is an advantage for every team around college football, but it just seems different here at Jordan Hare. We played Auburn five times mm -hmm. when I was at Florida. The two times we played him here, man, we were scratching and clawing the entire game. There's just something about the energy and just the way this football team responds to these fans. Jackson Dart short pitch Bentley and Bentley is taken down by Nixon. It's a nice misdirection scheme and it's something that Lane Kiffin likes to run too at Ole Miss where you're pulling the front side guard and tackle the other way trying to get the defense's eyes in the wrong place and then pitch it outside using the speed of your running back. Bentley look at that lane he's got Ulysses Bentley with a first down for Ole Miss out to the 49 and Joe he would be the feature back at so many programs yes. around the country man this guy has so much speed you hold your breath every time he has and I would argue in their last four games per touch he's given this offense more explosive plays than Quinshawn Jenkins like against LSU a few weeks ago and look at how patient he is and had the opportunity had nine carries for 90 yards and a touch three weeks ago against LSU you got to make the most of it there nice job pulling the left tackle Victor Kern and you just see the, the patience and the vision that you just talked about. Here goes that tempo, Joe. 22 seconds per play. Bentley utilizing the blocker in front and then going around to the right, and he is in a groove. And Lane Kiffin's running the same play over and over and over, pulling the backside tackle. I love coaches that do that, Joe, because in the NFL, you always see guys say, you can run the play once, but then the defense adjusts. It's never going to work again. Lane Kiffin believes if it's working, then prove you can stop it. Back-to-back -back runs, handing it off to Bentley, paying dividends for Ole Miss. And yeah, now Judkins comes in, the guy who had over 1,500 yards a year ago, one of the most dangerous backs in the sport. And they'll keep it on the ground. To the other side, Quinshawn Judkins goes ahead for nine yards. And the thing I love about this one two punch at running back too is that both guys do the same things well right they can both run inside the tackles they both have speed so it's not like one guy's the inside guy one guy's the outside guy and they're giving away to the defense what's going to happen they keep you on your toes. Five rushes make it six on this drive and look at that as Judkins got low was able to matador that defensive front and go ahead for the first down. Yeah, Lawrence Johnson in the middle of that Auburn defense, he got some penetration, and it looked right there that Elijah McAllister had a tackle for loss, but slippery running by Judkins. Short pitch again, Judkins. And this rushing attack of Ole Miss is showing you how capable they are. And they're getting lined up quickly, and they're going. I mean, the tempo right now is wearing Auburn right now with a mass substitution at a time where the ball's close to their bench. They can get—they just brought in about five or six fresh bodies onto the field. This tempo man is rolling. This time, excellent work from that front. It was Jalen McLeod that was able to get some penetration into the backfield again. Lane Kiffin going again back to the same thing again. Toss works once. We're going to go right back to it. There's McLeod. You see 35. Get his hand on the back to slow him down. Second and goal. Dart's going to pull it. And he had pressure right in his face. It's Marcus Harris. Yeah, I think he's the best D lineman for Auburn. All season long, he's been living 
in the opponent's backfield. That time, he was the one that got through and got the hit. Flag is down. Going to call that intentional grounding? There are two fouls on the play, both by the offense. Illegal formation on the offense. More than four in the backfield. That penalty is declined. Intentional grounding on the offense number two. That penalty is a loss of down. At the spot of the foul, it will be third down. Well, it's an illegal formation because Dayton Wade, the split end, is not on the line of scrimmage here. He's got to be up one yard, so that's what makes that illegal. And then Jackson Dart was in the pocket when he let go of this football. No intended receiver anywhere near, and that's where you get the intentional ground. This is second and goal. But the ball's at the 20-yard line. Excuse me, third and goal from the 20 because of the penalty. This is where Auburn has struggled in these critical third downs, that first drive, right? Pass interference, third and long. Long run to Judkins, third and long. They've got to step up here and make a play. So third and goal from the 20 after the intentional grounding. And this crowd is the loudest it's been all night. Listen to it. And Dart is chased again, has to check down to Bentley. Bentley Ooh. met at the 11-yard line and then taken down. That was a really nice open field hit by Jalen Simpson against a guy that's very, very elusive in the open field. Nice job by Dart, just finding a way somehow to get rid of that out to Bentley. You see Simpson gets the first hit, and then his teammates come in and finish it off. So with the job the defense did to force the intentional grounding, and then the job they just did to pursue Bentley, Caden Davis comes on the field for the attempt. And it is a fire call, and it's a disastrous one, as that ball is picked off by Puckett. Charlie Pollock, the backup punter, the holder, put into a position you would never want to see him in. Charlie Pollock was never able to secure this snap, and just in desperation, heaved it down the middle of the field, Joe. Pollock misplayed it, had to go with the fire call. And oh boy, was he in hot lava with that. Bobbling, thinking about it, and hoping for anything. Second Ole Miss turnover. Line. That's where they intercepted the ball after the bad hold on the attempted field goal as Hunter takes it ahead. So Ole Miss, Jesse, their first two drives, a couple of touchdowns, their last three drives, interception, three and out, and then that mistake on special teams where you have the, the holder, who's the backup punter, throwing an interception. A lot of goal. miscues here, and all of a sudden all the momentum, it seems, back on Auburn's side. They would love nothing more than to matriculate, matriculate this ball down the field here, bleed the clock, because, of course, it's going to be Ole Miss receiving the kickoff here in the second half. Ashford just dumps it underneath to his tight end deal. Rumbles ahead, the 260 pounder, and flag comes down at the end of the play. But that small ball game with Robbie Ashford can be effective. interference on the offense number 87 that penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal from the previous spot with a replay of second down it's Brandon Frazier the tight end there getting called he's coming off a career day against LSU he caught, caught his first career touchdown at a 39 yard reception but you know this small ball game with the zone read and guys in flats you got to be careful that you don't got guys blocking too early downfield when the ball crosses the line of scrimmage in the air, that's a penalty. So it makes for a second and 11. Ball at the four yard line. Ashford from his own end zone. And he gets a complete out to the 10 yard line, but well defensed as he connects with Coy Moore. 
Well, it's only the fifth passing attempt for Auburn in this game. They're trying to just run the ball and be more physical. But again, Joe, that's a big hitch route completed there because it makes this thing manageable. And for Robbie Ashford running the ball, or Peyton Thorne, whoever was ever in the game, and it's Thorne now, with his running ability, you know, these guys can take off if it's not open. Now this is what we saw. Third and five, Thorne comes in, platooning quarterbacks. Thorne considered the more accurate passer, both very athletic. Third down and five. Hunter. He is tackled for a loss. That was Jeremiah Jean Baptiste with an outstanding play for Ole Miss. And it was a perfect play call by Pete Golden, the defensive coordinator for Ole Miss, because he brought the corner blitz from the boundary. Zamari Walton blows this up right here. They're running it into the boundary. You're going to see him just come screaming down the line. He's able to hit the left tackle, disengage, doesn't make the play. Jeremiah John Baptiste is able to do it. And a timeout is going to be used by Ole Miss with two and a half to play. A 14-14 game. And listen, visiting with the coaches down here at Auburn, they just wanted to put last week against LSU in the rearview mirror and really come out and say, hey, we have higher expectations when it comes to effort, and that is what you have seen tonight. Yeah, they, they were very anxious and eager to turn the page from that and get back out here for another opportunity, come out, play with effort, and compete in front of this crowd, and we've seen it. Right now, it's, it feels to me, Joe, which team can run the ball the best. Both right now doing a pretty good job, but this game feels like it's going right down to the wire. Oh, that's a muff! And it's a fight for the ball! Dayton Wade may have jumped on it again, but it is going to be all out wrestling to see who comes up with it. A big boot from Oscar Chapman. As Ole Miss, and a flag is down back at the 35 yard line. Ole Miss and Dayton Wade was able to dive back and get that after muffing the punt from Chapman. Well, there's another impact of not having Jordan Watkins at receiver in this game because he's their primary punt returner. So now you've got other guys having to do the job. And they're struggling. The on the receiving team, number 13. That 10 yard penalty will be enforced from the end of the kick. First down. See Dayton Wade here trying to wave this thing off with a fair catch. Just can't locate it and find it. Very, very lucky Kay and Lee didn't jump on that. The true freshman for Auburn. Just a lot of sloppy play, yes. you know, from Ole Miss now. These last couple drives, you were just talking about it a few minutes ago offensively and the things that have gone wrong, the turnovers, and they narrowly avoided disaster right there on special teams. And I'm sure Lane Kiffin is saying to himself, wait a minute, I just used a timeout. Third punt from their own end zone. We're going to have great field position. And you look up, and all of a sudden they're starting this drive from around the 27-yard line. They got lots of time, though. Two minutes, 20 seconds, two timeouts, the tempo they work at. They'll run the ball a lot in two-minute situations, too, and just run it down your throats. Dart, take the pitch. Look at the time. Downfield he goes, and incomplete. Looking for Trey Harris as Keontae Scott was there with coverage. And again, there's Keontae Scott covering the smash route by Trey Harris on the outside, who's an excellent route runner. Just stays underneath him, gets back, locates the football, but plays it clean. Really impressed by number zero here early in this game. Dart wide open is Priest Corn, and Priest Corn takes it past midfield. Nobody covering the tight end. Well, it's a great job of Dart knowing he's hot. They're going to bring Scott here. They're going to bring the linebacker. So you got to throw from where the blitz comes from, and that's pre scoring right there, curling up. 27 yards on the reception. Ole Miss, big opportunity here before halftime. Dart tripped up. It was Marcus Harris simply driving back the offensive line right into Jackson Dart. We talked about how good he's been this year. Plays with such tremendous leverage. He's only 295 pounds, but he's very, very low to the ground, right in the middle against Quincy McGee at the left guard, just pushing him back into the QB. Second and 16. To the outside, incomplete, looking for Franklin.
third and 16. Dart, they pick up the pressure. But does he have any options? No, as he's ripped down by McLeod. Jalen McLeod bringing down Jackson Dart. Well, it looks like he had Dayton Wade open on the drag route, just didn't throw it. Batman's excited. Big play by McLeod. Everything. All encompassing. In caps. Ooh. That's off to the side, nearly into the hedges. Going back on that critical third down a moment ago, Jalen McLeod makes a great play for Auburn up front. They're going to try and hit Wade on a drag route, and they've got pre-scoring, and they've got receivers down trying to block it. Watch the defensive end, though, drop out and take the throw away early. This has to get to him now, but because he's standing there in zone coverage, reading the quarterback, Dart wasn't able to get it to him as early as he wanted to. And even, even if he had thrown that football, there would have been a penalty for illegal blocking downfield. So Jalen McLeod has made a, had a big game here so far, Joe. Not just getting pressure on the quarterback, but also doing a nice job in coverage. That was a 10-yard punt by Ole Miss. A 10-yard punt. So think about the special teams, the last two outings for Ole Miss. You got the bad hold where you throw an interception and now a 10 yard punt. Nick's in a muff that they had to recover. Robbie Ashford now with a minute to go before the half. It's going to take a shot downfield. Coverage is downfield. Throws it right into coverage and it is intercepted. That was John Saunders just sitting back there in center field saying, thank you, Robbie. Yeah, that ball floated and hung for a long time. It was not a pretty spiral coming out of Robbie Ashford's hand. And that allowed Saunders to get over. He's a guy that played cornerback back in the day at Miami of Ohio. They were trying to go to Javarius Johnson on the post. But a big turnover for Ole Miss's defense after a bad punt, Joe. Nice job in sudden change situation for Ole Miss. So now 54 seconds to play before we get to Matt, Joey, and Dan. And Ole Miss back with the ball, two timeouts, but back at the 12-yard line. Judkins nearly tackled for a loss, and instead he's slippery enough to make it a game. This has been back and forth in this first half, Joe. I'd expect in the second half, which team runs the ball the best and which team can do a better job taking care of the football? We've seen some critical turnovers here in opportune times for both of these teams. They're going to have to settle down, but just like last year's matchup, who can be the more physical at the point of attack running it, I think is going to determine who wins this game. Judkins is going to run out this clock in the first half. Auburn wanted to change things up. They won the toss, so he said, we'll take the ball. They put Robbie Ashford out there. Didn't work out to begin. Ole Miss scored first, but Auburn's defense has been firing off, and their offense with Hunter has been running the ball well in a wildly entertaining and intriguing first half here. Katie. Thanks, Tess. Lane, you told us this week how difficult it is to play here. We've seen some miscues. How would you describe your team's play so far? Well, it kind of happens in this stadium. Weird things happen. So, you know, we screw up the field goal, bad punt. But, you know, uh, to be tied at half, and we played a really ugly half, and weathered their storm, uh, it's fourth quarter game, and this team's built for that. What do you need to see from your offense next half? Well, we had the one bad throw 
we got the got the turnover and we've run the ball really well so we just got to come out and play a really clean second half. Thank you. Yep. They have run the ball well. Chuskins has got 78. All tied up at 14s as we go to the studio for the halftime report with Matt, Joey, and Dan. Gentlemen, take it away. Fun night here as ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by IHG Hotels and Resorts. The bright lights of Jordan Hare, 14 to 14, number 13 team in the country being tested tonight. Jackson Dart has a touchdown pass, a touchdown run for the Rebels. Jarquez Hunter has two touchdown runs for Auburn. Had a 53-yard run in that first half. Ole Miss is going to receive the ball here. Remember, Auburn won the toss to start the game, and they said, we want the ball to open up this game. As Bentley is the deep man, but we won't see him. Joe Tessitore and Jesse Palmer with you on this SEC Saturday night. The second lowest first half points this season for Ole Miss. Give credit to the Auburn defense. You kind of knew they were going to come out here yeah. playing with their hair on fire, right? Look, LSU is going to score on everyone, but I think they were embarrassed giving up 48 points and over 560 yards last week because all season long, the defense has been the calling card for Auburn, something they could lean on. Even in losses against Georgia and Texas A&M, the defense kept them in the game, Joe. They're playing with better effort in this game and getting guys healthy. Keontae Scott in the slot has been a big impact for Auburn's defense. We've seen that in the past, D. So this Auburn defense, to me, after shutting out Ole Miss in the second quarter, they're making a little bit of a statement here. Jackson Dart, quarterback for the Rebs, 5-9 passing, 85 yards. The touchdown did throw the interception. He was behind on a pass that was tipped and picked off by Donovan Kaufman and returned 43 yards. Judkins. A lot of traffic, and then he was tripped up by Marcus Harris. And Ole Miss has to stop with the miscues. They've got to be able to find their composure here, as you see an Ole Miss lineman down on the ground. It's like Micah Pettis, the right tackle. A guy that can't afford to lose, but been all a bunch of stuff going wrong for Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss. Offensively, they threw a big interception early and a guy that was wide open on the deep crossing route. That ball got thrown behind Franklin and picked off in a big return. You saw the muffed field goal snap. They also muffed a, a punt return that they were lucky to fall on right here. Defensively, they gave up a lot of big plays in that first half as well, and they had seven penalties. So there's just a lot going wrong for Lane Kiffin. He was telling Katie at the end of the first half, we played this bad and we're still tied. We should feel good about that, but they've got to find their composure because they haven't been handling this environment very well. And the only way you do that to get that composure back and create some momentum is people have to step up and make plays. Dart on second and eight. Great job with protection and it gives him the ability to drive the ball to Trey Harris. He had a lot of time to throw this football. Look at the offensive line here doing a nice job. They moved their left tackle, Victor Kern, over to right tackle after the injury to Pettis, and a beautiful job. And now look at Judkins as he gave a little shimmy move against Jalen Simpson in his pass midfield. And it's Victor Kern in the first half. He was playing left tackle pulling. This time he's at right tackle pulling, and if the play keeps working, you got to just keep running it. And this time there wasn't much as Keldrick Falk, the big recruit, the true freshman who has to step up because of an injury, makes the tackle. You know, this is starting to feel like last year's game in a sense. Remember Ole Miss ran for over 400 yards, but Auburn ran for over 300 yards. It was physical. And both of these teams are committed to getting it done here on the ground. Who does it best in the second half? I think that's a big question here. Last year Ole Miss won 48 to 34 in Oxford. Of course, the struggles have come. Herrett Jordan Hare historically for the Rebels. Just 3 and 17 on the road at Auburn. Second and nine. Dart backed up. Downfield to his open running back, Bentley, but that's out of bounds, incomplete. Eugene Asante, the linebacker, got caught up in coverage and, with Bentley. And Asante, the UNC transfer, is their most athletic linebacker. And he's, he got himself one-on-one -on -one with one of the faster running backs in the country on a wheel route. At this point, I thought Dart was going to throw it earlier. But he just led him a little too far to the outside. That was a great catch by Bentley, but just poor location of the throw by Dart. So now a third and nine. The 
ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. That play is under video review. So they're going to review the end of the play to Bentley. Ball thrown a bit behind. He's going to have to tap dance here down the sideline. See, I think his right foot steps on the white line before the ball gets there. See right there, you right see that there. right foot's already down, so he's out of bounds. He wasn't pushed out of bounds. So at that point right there with the ball, with the, the right foot on the white line, he's ineligible to catch that ball. But it is a great athletic effort by That's Bentley, incredible. though, just to twist and turn around and show the belt. Going full speed yeah. downfield, too. And, he's been, in and in the Alabama game, he made a big catch on a scramble play on a wheel route as well. This is something this guy's been showing the last four games. You see the right foot there on the white stripe. It's a great job. The camera angle, clean that up. Ruling on the field was an incompletion, so you need indisputable video evidence to overturn this. I think it's pretty clear, though. He steps out of bounds before that ball gets to him. That is a great effort making the catch. Well, it's been nothing but a great effort from Bentley over the course of this entire year. Young man who, you know, had success at SMU, transferred, was hurt last year, but just kept working hard. Meanwhile, Quinshawn Junkins comes in as a superstar freshman. How about that? Last year, had the second best freshman year in SEC history after right. Herschel Walker. But I'll tell you, Bentley's earned his touches, too. Didn't get a lot of opportunities early in the season, but when he did, he made them count. And so they've had no choice but to give number 24 more looks. And he almost made it. He made an unbelievable play right there that they're reviewing. It's so important here on this first drive of the second half. Too. We're talking about them having to get some of that momentum back. If that play were to get overturned, man, that would be be a big one for Ole Miss. Remember, the ruling on the field was incomplete, so they need that indisputable video evidence to say otherwise. But this is what happened. Jesse, you point out that heel right there. That's from the pylon cam. As we get the zoom, and there it is. After video review, the receiver stepped out of bounds prior to touching the ball. That way. Therefore, it is illegal touching, which is a loss of down at the previous spot. It is third down. So it's third and nine. And you know the way it's been. With this crowd at this place, with the band and the home fans. And Ole Miss has their starting right tackle, Micah Pettis, back out on the field. But can they hold up against this Auburn pass rush, expecting pass here in this situation? Last time Ole Miss converted a third down tonight was back in the first quarter. They're one of six on third downs against Auburn's defense. Third and nine. Here comes the pressure. Bentley, nowhere to go. Driven back. Marcus Harris. Oh, he knows it. There's Elijah McAllister slipping inside Kern out here. Kern's trying to work up to the DB, but he doesn't take care of the body right in front of him. It's the penetration that forces Bentley to go further outside before cutting back. And there's the pursuit by Auburn's defense that is playing so much better here since that game against LSU. That is six TFLs now for Ron Roberts defense. Mazin flag comes down as he backspins this inside the 10 yard line. Illegal substitution on the receiving team. They played with 12 players. That five-yard penalty will be enforced from the previous spot with the replay of fourth down. It was fourth and ten.
So the clarification there of the replay of fourth down, but it was fourth and ten. So Jackson Dart comes out onto the field for fourth and five. Because of the penalty, Lane Kiffin says fourth and five. Yeah, we won't be punting. They've had success on fourth down tonight. Two for two. Remember, Jackson Dart had the 29-yard touchdown run on fourth down. Second chance for Ole Miss. Here's Dart on fourth down. Shallow cross is stopped. Excellent job by Kaufman and Pritchett. Well, Kaufman was hunting up the inside route. He had his eyes in the right place, and he located the drag. He's looking this way, and once he sees the drag, he knows to just beat on it right here. Comes downhill, push it on the outside. Both guys playing with perfect leverage and getting a gang tackle short of the sticks on Franklin. Can't do it any better, Joe. Turnover on downs. They punt it away. Penalty gave him a second chance. Lane goes for it, as he often does, but the defense stepped up. Robbie Ashford, the quarterback again. Hunter straight ahead as he goes for eight and a half yards. Katie. Tess, Hugh Freeze told me it would be huge if his defense could start this half with a stop. They pulled through, but he said his offense is playing average at best. He said we should have capitalized on that bad punt just before half. He said we throw an interception rather than just checking it down and getting a field goal. He said I like our offensive plan here in the second half. We have to play smarter, though, on the offensive side of the ball. And Katie, as he told you, the offensive plan when Robbie Ashford's on the field comes right right from Hugh Freeze. Broken play, Ashford chased down. Santaren Perkins able to get to Ashford. He's an outstanding freshman linebacker. Yeah, and he's a guy that in high school got a lot of coaches' attention in his 3A state championship game in Mississippi. Ran for 330 yards, four touchdowns, had three catches, six tackles, a pick, and was also kicking extra points. There's nothing that Perkins can't do. And here's a guy that they just want to let run free. They don't want to overcomplicate things for Perkins, not make him overthink as Auburn goes back to Peyton Thorne. Third down and six. Peyton Thorne comes in, platooning quarterbacks. Oh, and he is brought down and sacked. And what a great job by Jared Ivey to beat his man and get to Thorne. It's a great job by Ivey using his hands to knock those of Cam Stutz down and able to get into the backfield there. The Georgia Tech transfer, he's been the most disruptive D lineman up front for Ole Miss this year in an obvious passing situation, pinning his ears back. Two big time plays back to back by Perkins and now Ivey. Chapman boots it away. As he drives it, and it takes a great bounce inside the five and into the end zone for a touchback. Jared Ivey doing damage for the Ole Miss defense. 14 apiece, number 13 here at Auburn. ESPN Jesse on Tuesday night. Leafs, Caps, Bruins, Blackhawks, Flyers, and Golden Knights. All 32 teams will be in action Tuesday night. You grew up a Leafs fan? Uh, I, oh, yeah, I, I, I kind of triple dipped, here. actually. I was yeah. Leafs, uh, Senators, and uh, Habs, which would be like saying you're an you Alabama, do? Auburn, and LSU fan. You can't do that. You can't do that. No. The original six, though, match up there, Chicago, Boston. I'm down with that. Bentley able to break that first tackle. By the way, Jordan Watkins did come into the game there. The wide receiver who was injured last week suffered a hand injury during the bye week and we didn't see in the first half and typically they're starting punt return. Well we talk about him being so dependable normally in the slot now lined up outside wide. He's a guy that just is a very good route runner. He can separate and that gives Jackson, uh, that gives Dart a lot of confidence thrown to him. Second and five. Bentley can he bounce this? No. A flag comes down as he was taken down by Austin Keys, who they're very happy to have back. Transfer from Ole Miss, who broke his hand earlier this year, and now is cleared to play. 
And Ulysses Bentley is slow to get up at the end of this play. And he just took a seat on the turf. Wow. And he's one of the biggest home run hitters, if not the best, that they have with his speed. Both running and catching the football. Not a guy Ole Miss can afford to lose at this juncture of the game when they have to be able to run the ball to win this one. Holding on the offense, number 57. That penalty is declined. It will be third down. So the medical staff is out to see Ulysses Bentley, who, in terms of splitting the carries to this point, Judkins with 14 carries and Bentley with 11. And now he's able to make his way off the field, which is a great sign. We take a look at what this has been for Ole Miss and Quinshawn Judkins got going on the very first drive of the game. This offensive line has done a nice job, Joe, opening up some holes and getting him into the second level. Now a situation on third down. Watkins is on the field all the way up top. Third and five. Dart pushed back again. And they go underneath incomplete as Harris was covered by Keontae Scott. Austin Keys at linebacker gets pressure. He's a guy that they've missed. He's been injured, and this time on third down, he's coming off the edge working against Jaden Williams right in here. You see, that just forces Jackson Dart. He can't even get his feet set, so he can't make an accurate throw. But we've talked about Keontae Scott and them getting some bodies back that time. The Ole Miss transfer, Austin Keys, making a big play against his former team. Played a couple seasons at Ole Miss. And he's a big part of the success they feel will be coming down the line at Auburn. Mazen is on to punt more back to return. Second Ole Miss three and out tonight. Moore straight ahead on the return. Coy Moore keeps his balance. Flag is down. Ball is out and then picked up. We will check on the flag. As Pritchett was trailing the return by Moore to chase down that ball. Champ Anthony, number 25, is going to get a block in the back for Auburn on the back end. That was a low line drive punch, Joe. That was dangerous. He had a lot of room to work once Coy Moore fielded it. During the return, illegal block in the back on the receiving team number 25. That 10 yard penalty will be enforced from the spot of the foul. First down. You see it's coming from the left side of your screen. There's Champ Anthony, just a little bump right there and that's all it took. Auburn with the ball when we come back all tied up against the number 13 team in the country. Tomorrow it's the Formula One U.S. Grand Prix at the Circuit of the Americas in Austin, 3 p.m. Eastern on ABC. I was in Austin on Thursday and I got a chance to do a hot lap with McLaren. Top speed on the straight test was 175. Oh. Had I eaten at Acre before getting in that car, things could have gotten messy. Let me just oh, say. Oh, but let me tell you, you ate enough at Acre last night with Chef Bancroft. Boy, did I. I mean, just destroying the snow crab or a Oh, that would have been boudin balls and oh. fish on the half shell and, and a ribeye. All over the windshield in that car. Aker was crushing it last night. Here's Robbie Ashford with blockers in front as he glides his way for a short game. Well, when Robbie Ashford's in the game, Ole Miss is not thinking pass. So they're getting guys closer to the line of scrimmage. You notice the safeties, they just creep down a little bit more. Pete Golden feels like he's got a pretty good read on what's going to be coming, and that's that's kind of the problem with this offense right now. They're very predictable. When Peyton Thorne's in the game, you're thinking more pass. When it's Robbie Ashford, it's always, almost always run. He's got four yards there in the backfield with Jarquez Hunter as the two touchdown runs tonight, and on second and six, Hunter is going to be pushed back. And now on this third down, I mean, if you're Auburn, who can get open and make a play? You know this has to be killing head coach Hugh Freeze because you think back to his offenses, especially at Ole Miss. Think about the receivers yes. that they were throwing to, right? Dante Moncrief, Laquan Treadwell, Evan Ingram. They had guys that could push the field vertically and make contested catches. They just don't have those guys right now on this offense at Auburn. And so they're so limited with what they can do play comp. 
They bring the tight ends into a full loaded inverted diamond backfield. And with that, Ashford was looking for the pop pass, but now he has to try to do it with his legs as he tried to get around his tight end loop deal as Tennyson was giving pursuit. And with that mark, they say he glided out of bounds short. Wow. His tremendous speed to get away from the Auburn transfer, Tennyson. But just got to have a awareness and maybe lay out for that stretch out with the football to guarantee that first down. And after getting stuffed in the opening drive on fourth down, I don't think Hugh Freeze has the confidence to go for it here in a similar situation. Now, this is interesting. Jordan Watkins, who has that right hand all casted up, is back as the punt returner. Remember, they had a muff earlier. And he's able to secure the fair catch even with that bad right hand and all that extra support on it. Jesse, let's look at the mark of a fighter brought to you by Modelo. Yeah, Auburn's defense has been looking pretty good here since the second quarter. We've seen speed trying to slow down Jackson Dart here in the QB runs, getting outside, gang tackling, playing with proper leverage, and also a nice job up front and in the secondary with coverage. We always know this year they've been outstanding with turnovers, and Aaron Throw gets picked off by Kaufman, and a big return led to points for Auburn the other way. But if you're Ron Roberts, the D coordinator for Auburn, you have to love what you You've seen in the fight and the effort from your defense that was lacking last week against LSU. That's the mark of a fighter. By the way, I'm going to be between two massive fighters yeah, this coming are. week. Tyson Fury, Francis Ngannou is a week from right now on ESPN Plus pay-per-view from Saudi Arabia. Ngannou, you know, puncher's chance with that power oh, he has. Puncher. But, I mean, Fury, modern-day Muhammad Ali, would you say? Oh, in terms of the movement. That ball nearly busted loose as Junkins was able to secure it. They, they do a lot of these, these these tosses out wide, and that pitch really has to be on the body of the running back. That time it got a little bit too far out in front of Judkins, and that took a very, very fortunate it bounce is. for Ole Miss. It's an, the football and the shape. That could have bounced a number of different ways. Instead, it's a second and eight. Harmless after two yards from Judkins. Watkins remains in. Didn't see him in the first half. Now he's top of the screen. Senior productive receiver. Judkins, nothing there. It's going to be third and long for the Rebs. Yeah, I'm impressed. Up front with Auburn, Justin Rogers at 350 pounds, the Kentucky transfer. He is just eating guys and he's taking on double teams and winning. And you were mentioning earlier all the tackles for a loss this Auburn defense has, Joe. They're just winning at the point of attack. We talked about who could run the ball best here in the second half. Auburn defensively has been physical. Seven TFLs by the Auburn defense tonight. Third and eight. Dart's going to try to run it. Nothing. They get to him again. Eugene Asante, as well as Marcus Harris, there to meet Jackson Dart. Well, that time, Eugene Asante was spying Jackson Dart. It's another really good call by Ron Roberts here in the middle, anticipating QB run. He's just going to be watching Dart the entire time, stay close to the line of scrimmage, and if he takes off, then he's triggering right now to come up and make a play. Fourth punt, and it's another line drive. Moore came close to fielding it, but just beyond midfield, it'll be downed. And now a quick word from Verbo. We're here live in the family room of this Verbo vacation home. It's a house divided for this rematch between bitter rivals. Man, it's a good thing Verbo gives you the whole house, so there's plenty of space to go around. Back to you. So let's just size this up for you. Number 13 team in the country going up against that guy, the old head coach of Ole Miss back in the day, who's come over here, has to try to quickly rebuild the roster as Hugh Freeze, and wasn't pleased with the energy and effort last week against LSU. So they practiced hard on Friday, something he's never done in his entire career with a team, as Batty is weaving his way past midfield. And all of a sudden, you look up at the clock, and you look up at that scoreboard. We're coming up on under five minutes to go in the third, and it's all tied up. Yeah, and his team's playing with phenomenal energy. And offensively, they you know, it's funny. They've, they've thrown for, like, I think, 26 yards. They've got Ole Miss right where they want him. It's a close game. They can run the football, bleed the clock, feed off the crowd energy. 
Here they are at midfield in great position. Here's Thorne trying to run it on second and six, and somehow he is able to get past Jean Baptiste. Peyton Thorne was matched up with Jeremiah Jean Baptiste and shook him. Yeah, when you watched Ole Miss defensively this year at linebacker, that's been their biggest problem and missed tackles and finding the football. Jean Baptiste in perfect position, but there's the surprise athleticism that a lot of people did not know Peyton Thorne had at the start of the year. Great open field running. Fortunate that wasn't a face mask. Could have been. And then here's Auburn now in business. That was their first first down of this second half. Fatty, nothing at all. Down the line pursuit and fitting up that run. That was a nice job by Stone. Some tempo now from the Tigers. Second and ten. This could be a double pass. But instead, torn down. That was Holden Gariner, the third string quarterback who snuck into the game and Dejon Anthony was all over it. Well, they were trying to sneak Jeremiah Cobb, the true freshman running back out of the backfield downfield, but John Baptiste was ready for it. He kind of gets run into there, he, but he, that's not pass interference defensively. He's entitled to be in that space and Cobb runs right into him. You see right there. And as a result, Gariner has to hold the football and it's a huge tackle for loss. Third and 19. And this Ole Miss defense responds very well. Good play by Ukwo. Yeah, the way they're flying around right now, this is like the old Landshark defense we used to see back in the day with tremendous effort. Pete Golden, who of course spent four years with Nick Saban at Bama, defensive coordinator for Lane Kiffin. It was a tremendous effort by his squad as Chapman Back on to punt. Jordan Watkins gave it a go. Tested that right hand in warm ups. Flag is down as it leaks inside the five and into the end zone. Receiving team number 13. That penalty will be enforced 10 yards from the touchback spot. First down. That is where Ole Miss will take over. Closing moments of the third quarter tied up here on the Plains. All season long student sections across this fine country are competing to be the Taco Bell Litma student section of the year. You can download the Taco Bell app and learn more. You can also wear an orange blazer to Taco Bell if you choose. Orange blazer rep tie. It's a good looking Go game it. day here in junior. Yeah. It's 14 14 number 13 Ole Miss being tested. Auburn only has five first downs. Four of them were in the first half. And yet it's a tie game. Let's see if Jackson Dart and this Rebels offense can change that. He fakes the short pitch. Then he gets it batted down at the line of scrimmage. That was Lawrence Johnson, the transfer from Purdue, getting in the way of that passing lane. Great job of awareness, too. They're trying to hit a drag route underneath, and he knows, Johnson, that he's not going to get home, so he just slows his rush down against the double team under control. He gets that big right pop to bat it down. Second and ten, Jutkins. Able to turn the corner and then ridden now will be third and about four after that play. As it was Cam Riley who was able to get to him. Uh, and it gives Auburn an opportunity to substitute. They bring Austin Keys back on the field. The Ole Miss transfer to get their best pass rushers here in a third down situation. Third down. Dart looks left. Looks back across the middle and he's got a man stride and it's Trey Harris first down Rebs it's a great job with the eyes of Jackson Tart working one way to keep Jalen Simpson number 36 the free safety out to the other side of the field opening up a space to throw the skinny post
And he goes right back to it. Trey Harris again as Jackson Dart finding a rhythm on this drive. Again, using his eyes to manipulate the defense. Does it again. Jalen Simpson is one of the best ball hawks in all of college football playing free safety. Four picks on the year because he reads the QB's eyes and drives throws. But Jackson Dart right now, he's just got him running all over the middle. And you're seeing the experience of Dart, the USC transfer, second year in this system now, feels so much more comfortable, especially throwing it deep down the field. 24 yards on that completion. Inside pitch, Bentley. And Bentley is wrapped up and then pushed back. Cam Riley, late flag came in right in the middle of that pit. Personal foul, face mask on the defense number six. That penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal from the end of the run, and it carries an automatic first down. That's Austin Keyes, who we were just talking about, the Ole Miss transfer, a guy that was injured. They're getting him back on the field, and he brings a physicality to this defense, no doubt. But there, he just grabbed the face mask of Bentley. You'll see right here in the middle, that left hand. That's a good call. And all of a sudden, just in a matter of seconds, Ole Miss knocking on the door. Judkins able to turn the corner, round left tackle, and make the most of that. He is explosive. He's got great balance. And there is mom. They call her Mama T, Tiva, in that great sequence jersey rooting on her son, Quinshawn. Final half minute of the third. Push the pile moment for Ole Miss, pushing it all the way inside the one as Judkins takes it there. Judkins is unique in the sense that he's got speed outside to bounce it if he wants, but he's very, very patient. Is so good between the tackles as well. Plays with really good pad level, gets low to the ground, can push the pile and find a lot of hidden yards. Not a lot this guy can't do. Second and goal. Dart going to try to do it himself, and he does. Well, hotty toddy, they take the lead. Jackson Dart, as his family says, boy. He just went home for a hunting trip, and he's been running the ball tough. Here at Auburn, a 90-yard drive capped by this. Well, it's an RPO for Day uh, Dayton Wade on the swing, and if Jackson Dart's not going to throw that outside, he's got a backside guard pulling, and really that becomes QB power. So good decision there by Jackson Dart scoring the touchdown. Davis with the extra point. He went eight plays in two minutes and 32 seconds to close out the third quarter and to take a touchdown lead. Number 13 Ole Miss on top. Lane, you hadn't scored since the first quarter. Why was that drive successful? Well, it was good. We finally made some plays in the passing game there to loosen them up. We always have a problem. We don't make the first first down. So let's get ready for the 4th of July show here. Thank you. There have been no fireworks from the Auburn passing attack. They only have 26 yards, but this is a touchdown game. 21 to 14 as we start the fourth quarter, and Ole Miss has 12 more first downs, 200 more total yards, and 23 more plays than Auburn. Let's go to Matt in the studio. That is a great stab in that BYU game. Auburn could use a stab like that at some point in the passing game here as well. Three games with fewer than 100 passing yards. Here's the crazy thing. They've only got 26 tonight, but because it's only a seven-point game, they don't have to deviate from the game plan. They can keep trying to run it, trusting Ashford, Hunter, Batty, Thorne to get it done. They only have six pass attempts in the entire night. Hunter. 
Goes ahead for two yards. The third quarter, Jesse, a three and out punt, three and out yep. punt, five plays and punt. Well, and this Ole Miss defense this year is built to stop the run. Bringing over Pete Golden from Alabama as the D coordinator, I think was good from a scheme standpoint because they went from a 3-2-6 to a 3-4. So you've got two extra linebackers on the field. They play with three safeties, and it's helped them out against the run. They held Bama to less than three yards a carry. Arkansas to just 36 yards rushing in that game, and they've got to be big here in the fourth quarter. Second and eight. Hunter straight ahead. He was just tripped up. As they're going to mark him, maybe a football length short of that line to gain. It was Sistrunk who made the shoelace tackle. I've been impressed with the true freshman center, Connor Liu, taking over for the injured Avery Jones. And he's doing a nice job here in the zone schemes in the middle of this offensive line, getting in the second level, just getting a hat on somebody. And they're going to need the young star up front at center to make some big plays here. Mass substitutions for Auburn's Thorn came in at quarterback. Illegal substitution on the offense, breaking the huddle with 12 players. That's a five-yard penalty, and it remains third down. Yeah, they, they brought in some extra bodies there. Jaden Muskrat was playing in the backfield, the offensive tackle. So all of a sudden, now keep in mind, the play before was a shoelace tackle. Could have been a first down, could have been a chunk play. Instead, Seastrunk makes the tackle, and now the penalty of third and six. And now you've got to find a way to convert this in the passing game. And you've got a 250-pound tight end slash receiver in Rivaldo Fairweather, who's a size matchup problem. He's playing up top in the slot up here. Yeah, and a lot of times in these situations, they'll just run him to the sticks and have him turn around and just try to out-rebound a defender. And it's Robbie Ashford back in at quarterback. Third and six as Hunter tried to go straight ahead again, but Ivy made the tackle as well as Pagis combining there. Yeah, Ivy up front just beats Gunner Britton, the left guard, into the backfield. The inability throwing the ball, Joe, it just kills this offense. When you can't get explosive plays, you can't convert third downs, it makes it harder to score in the red zone. It just makes it harder to win. It's got to be so hard for Hugh Freeze, the play caller, everywhere he's been at Arkansas State, whether it's Ole Miss, Liberty, they've always had the ability to push it deep down the field. They don't have that. Here. Seventh punt of the night, fourth of this half for Chapman. Watkins able to secure it with that bad right hand, but he's been playing the second half. And the Rebels offense back out there, up a touchdown when we come back. happy that Jordan Watkins is back out there Katie. Yeah Tess Lane Kiffin didn't expect Jordan Watkins to play tonight. He had a plate put in his hand that came with stitches. He wasn't fitted for the cast that you see him wearing tonight until this morning. So he's working through punt returns and offense right now in real time with that new cast on his hand. His offense is out on the field. It's had an impact too, Katie. Obviously, he doesn't have any catches or any targets in this game, but returning punts. Remember, Dayton Wade had a muff earlier in the game, and Watkins has kind of shored that up for them on special teams. How much can Auburn ask of their defense? And can Jackson Dart and the Rebs put this game away? Bentley, look at him try to turn that corner and does so successfully for eight and a half yards before Keyes makes the tackle. Well, it's a great example of misdirection by Lane Kiffin here. Pull, pull, get the defense going this way, and you hand it back the other way to Bentley. It's so hard defending this offense because you got to have your eyes in the right place, and you got to get lined up quickly, communicate all the calls. And the boundary corner for Auburn, Nehemiah Pritchett, is injured at the end of that play. I see him grabbing at his right leg. We'll take a break. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by yeah, IHG Hotels and Resorts. 18 hotel brands, one loyalty program. Download the app. And in part by Cintas, prepare your team for what's ahead. Get Cintas and get ready for the workday. What a blessing in the life of head coach Hugh Freeze here at Auburn with his family surrounding him, including granddaughter Reagan, or daughter Reagan and his granddaughter Hudson. We showed up at the production meetings at his office, and that was the scene that we walked in on as he has his daughter Reagan, who's an executive assistant for Auburn football, and Hudson, a beautiful granddaughter who everybody around the facility 
nose and that was Grandpa Huber. Right she's now it's got, head coach Hugh. She's got Grandpa probably wrapped oh. around her finger too. Looking like that. So cute. And he's so appreciative of the Auburn family and how genuine they are with his family. As Bentley takes it ahead for a first down for Ole Miss. Well, Ole Miss closing in on about 200 rushing yards at this point. It's been three guys doing it. It's been Judkins, it's been Bentley, and it's been Jackson Dart. And here in the fourth quarter, up a touchdown. Certainly Lane Kiffin wants to continue to see this success running the ball. Dart. And he's going to be driven back by Justin Rogers. The transfer from Kentucky comes up big. He's 350 pounds, and he's pushing a 320-pound guard right back into the pocket. Just so strong at the point. Auburn playing man-to-man -man coverage. Nobody open right away, so Jackson Dart has to just hold it a little bit longer. But how nice is that when you can collapse the pocket? It is so difficult for a quarterback to throw when you've got guys in your lap. And you asked a moment ago, Joe, just how many more times can you ask this defense to bail you out? Right now, though, they're delivering. Four sacks tonight by Auburn. Seven tackles for loss. Second and 15. Dart drifting back, and he escapes the pressure. Jackson Dart on the run. Look at this, and he dives ahead for a first down. He got past Cam, Cam Riley, yeah, it was Jesse. Cam Riley, a big linebacker coming in on a blitz. He wasn't able to get there, though. And Jackson Dart just soft focus around him, hard focus downfield, and takes off when he sees the green light and open grass. And actually slid that time, Joe. I'm, I'm surprised. A spectacular 18-yard run that looked like it could have been a huge loss. And he's going to run it again as he's able to dive ahead after tripped up by Harris. Well, it was Cam Riley, this guy that's able to get in the backfield here, but you see Dart just very poised under pressure. Doesn't freak out, doesn't throw it away, doesn't heave it into coverage. Just keeps his bearings about him, uses that speed. <laughs> he slides face first forward, make sure he gets that first down. This is a guy that you're used to seeing try to run people over, maybe hurdle them. We saw that in the LSU game, it was phenomenal. Big time play though in a big moment. One of the better dual threat quarterbacks in the SEC. We got a chain issue. They're getting out the tools to fix the chain. See, Katie, Katie knows all about this covering F1. It's like the you know, pit stops and changing tires. Like, yeah, not, not so many chain issues, Jesse, in, a, in Formula One, but I got to tell you that Mama Kara is certainly happy in the stands tonight watching her son slide. This is a guy that loves physicality. He almost invites the hits, right, because he has such a physical mindset. Mom tells him before every single game, I love you, be great. Just don't forget to slide, please, just for the love of God, slide. <laughs> And buckle up your chin strap a little bit more. Lake Kiffin was saying, Katie, that sometimes he leaves that helmet a little bit loose. We've seen it pop off a few times throughout his career here at Ole Miss. Keeping mom on the edge of her seat. Mom's a marathon runner. Second and nine. Shot played downfield and into the hands of Harris. Jackson Dart, after the magic with his legs, shows the arm talent downfield to Trey Harris. It's a great job by Harris, too, getting behind coverage in the back end of Kay and Lee, the true freshman, a perfectly thrown ball. There is no defense for a perfect throw. Jackson Dart doing it with his legs and with his arms here on this drive late. 36-yard completion. Another man-to-man -man look by Auburn's defense here. First and goal. Quarterback run with Judkins blocking in front. And he gets it down to about the six-yard line, does Jackson Dart. Going back to that throw on the fade here a moment ago. Great job just catching. It's like a shortstop turning two. It's got to come out quickly, but puts perfect air under the ball. And a great job, too, of Harris on the fade route, giving himself space, stacking the corner, getting vertical down the field, and allowing the throw to sort of fade him out to the sidelines inbounds. Tight formation as Dayton Wade is in the backfield with Bentley. See if he motions out.
And he does, and he looks that way, and there was some movement pre-snap. Looked like it was going to be the Zion quarterback run with Dart. That was the exact same play they ran for a touchdown just a Full few series ago. on the offense, number 67. That's a five-yard penalty. Second down. Yeah, Quincy McGee's got his hands full in this game. We've seen him a couple times get beat into the backfield blocking. And again, the noise down here is still a big issue late in the game. This crowd is not getting quiet. They're trying to make it as difficult as possible on this offensive line and their communication. Second and goal. They go with the jet with Wade. But Wade is run down by Keontae Scott. And a late flag comes in as it was Larry Nixon who came in after Wade. Eugene Asante, I think, is the one that got in way late on that tackle. He's, he knows better than that. He's their leading tackler, and Dayton Wade's going out of bounds. He just got to hold up. After the play was over, personal foul, late hit out of bounds on the defense number nine. That penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal from the end of the run, and it carries an automatic first down. See how he's oh, yeah. yeah. And he kind of, you know. Nixon had him wrapped up, and Asante said, I got to sit in target. And you're not going to trick the pylon camera either. I mean, it's no. come up with some good angles in this game, Joe. A bit, another big one there. But that's one Eugene Asante's played enough football to know. I mean, you, you want to play with great effort. Hugh Freeze has demanded that of his defense in this game, and they've done that, but you just got to be smart. First and goal after the penalty. Judkins straight ahead and straight in. And that is the kind of drive that a team like this can put forth, and Lane knows it. And that's the power Judkins has. He's dragging a 288-pound defensive end, Keldrick Falk, into the end zone. So rare again to find running backs that have his elusiveness in the open field, but between the tackles, they get their shoulders low. He's got so much leg drive and, and power, and he is having himself a day. Ole Miss, they struggled early in the second half with their first three drives. Turnover on downs, a punt and punt, but the last two drives, man, they have looked the part. 14 points in the last two drives. And let's go back and take a look at this run. This is just simply right up the left side here, and you see 15, Falk. He's going to disengage and wrap up, but you go high on Judkins, you don't have a shot. And Katie, this running game, it has come alive for Ole Miss. Lane Kiffin loves it. He's got his best players making big plays, and Katie, mom loves it too. As she should. You know, he grew up less than an hour away in Pike Road, Alabama. He said this isn't a homecoming, but he did say how appreciative he is of all the support he has in the stands this evening. Mom Tiva, Dad Quincy, and many friends from his hometown and high school classmates are here to watch him play. Junkins grew up watching Auburn and Alabama, but Ole Miss was his first offer. He said building those relationships early and made it easy for me to leave my home state. Pike Road, Alabama, to a starring role in the SEC. Quinshawn Junkins. It's a Pike Road at 54 miles away from here. Yeah. Literally right That's down right. the road. But it was Ole Miss. Did a good job in there recruiting. Man, he has been good these last two years for Ole Miss. Two touchdown lead for the Rebels. What do you got, Matt Barry? That is what a big a night for UVA. win for Tony Elliott in UVA. That is incredible. You know, we started the year with them, Jesse. And, of course, the circumstances that no other college football team was dealing with as Thorne checks down to Hunter. But isn't it always true, though, Joe, when you look at the slate of games this weekend, mm -hmm. you know, outside of Ohio State, Penn State, you're thinking, ah, oh, ho-hum, everybody's favorite is going to win. This is what always happens. Teams pop up. They play big. Teams come in kind of sleepwalking, and UNC has been having a magical run up until today. 18 to 22-year-olds, man, each and every weekend. 
Thorne gets it out quickly, goes to Fairweather. Fairweather brings it out just past the 30 yard line. Here, third down from there. Well, here's the issue, right? Because they're so one dimensional, Auburn is not built offensively to play catch up and have to play in a two minute style situation where you have to throw each and every down. Prior to this drive, they only had six pass attempts. So you imagine now it's going to be Peyton Thorne the rest of the way for the Auburn Tigers. Here's third down for Thorne, and that is incomplete. It was broken up just at the last minute. He was trying to connect with Fair. Well, that's been one of the biggest issues for this receiving group is they haven't been able to make contested catches or 50-50 balls, and that time you got to give Trey Washington, their leader on defense, leading tackler, comes screaming downhill, makes a clean play to break that one up, setting up fourth down, and Auburn at this point, deep in their own end, they're going. Trey himself. Grew up a few hours from Auburn, has 13 family members here tonight, he told us the other day. Fourth and five, Thorne. Got to get to that line, and he does for a first down. And a little bit more. Good effort from Peyton Thorne. Really nice job. Cedric Johnson is screaming up the field off the right side. Jaden Muskrat was a little slow coming out of his stance at right tackle, but Peyton Thorne did it himself with his legs. Thorne getting the ball out quickly to Jay Fair. It's in this three-step game and, and how good it looks now, you know, you kind of wonder why you didn't see a little bit more of this maybe earlier in the game. These are high completion throws. And Peyton Thorne right now making good decisions and getting it out quickly. As an Ole Miss player is down and a cascade of boos comes with it from the crowd as they're reacting. J.J. Pagese, the former Auburn player, is being tended to by the medical staff. Interesting history in the SEC, right, Jess, in terms of coaches who have been at two different schools, coaches who have won I know national that. champions. I know one of them. Look at Nick Shirelli back here. Oh, look at Nick. Yeah, my college roommate, now a scout for the Denver Broncos. Coach O, of course, with what he did at LSU. Of course, Coach Saban. 
Coach Saban looks the same. Doesn't he in those two photos? Guy doesn't age. No, he doesn't. He's like a vampire. Thorne on second and one. Runs it well again for a first down. And then, of course, the game we have in front of us here, Coach Kiffin and Coach Freeze, they are two of the 20 coaches who have been at multiple SEC schools. Four, we showed you the four that won at least the national championship, but here are two of the 20 to serve at two different SEC schools. Thorne gets it out quickly. Looked like there was some early contact on Fairweather. Yeah, John Saunders Jr. was playing downhill hard on Fairweather, who just kind of curled up, and he got there a little too early. Pete Golden's defense. Pass interference on the defense number five. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. That carries an automatic first down. Here he is in the slot. They do this a lot with Fairweather. He's 250 pounds. They just kind of post him up, and he tries to box out people. That time, Saunders is a pretty big DB himself. He just got there a little too quickly. First down, Auburn. Thorne gets it on the quick out to Fairweather, and he's wrapped up immediately. Yeah, it's just a lot of short gains, right? They're just kind of they're getting it downfield, and Ole Miss is okay giving these giving these up. They're just going to rally to the football and tackle them and, and let the clock bleed. Second and six, Thorne, man in his face, lofts it downfield to the end zone, and that ball is intercepted. That's a good play by Walton. Well, he threw it up into double coverage. It's a great job, though, by Zamari Walton because he's on the outside and he's got a hitch route out in front of him. And it, it doesn't take his focus and attention away. He's got his eyes on the quarterback and he's able to just make a play and break on this in the back end. He's able to keep backing up. This ends up being thrown into double coverage and Walton just does a better job of, of locating the football. Here's Walton at the end of that play. It doesn't look like he has total. Yeah, total oh, does possession. He have firm I don't control? know if that was a catch. I don't know that he's got firm control through the process of this interception here. It's all right if it hits the ground as long as he has firm control, but that ball looks like it's loose I, I, when it I hits agree, the ground. Joe. I think they're going to take a look at that too, and I don't think he had complete and continuous control all the way through it. There's the pylon cam again. I and mean, it's a tremendous athletic effort by Zamari Walton, but just what you can see movement of the ball as it hits the ground. Yeah, and that's what he's that, that ball hit the ground. Yeah. So Peyton Thorne came in on that series. And, you know, before that drive, Jesse, Auburn had six total pass attempts. Six total pass attempts. We're in the fourth quarter of the game. And then that was Auburn's sixth pass attempt of that drive. It's just so frustrating, though, Joe, that they, they cannot find any rhythm throwing it deep down the field. I mean, they throw hitch routes and they throw flat routes, and that's that's all good and great. But it, it's amazing to me that just completing a simple 12 yard curl or a dig feels virtually the impossible. The coach is challenging the play on the previous play that it was a touchback. That plays under video review. As he should. officials came over to Hugh Freeze and said you're welcome to challenge it but right now they're not seeing anything that would lend itself to stopping the game and Hugh Freeze said he bobbled that ball it hits the ground I want the challenge. Good call by Hugh Freeze kid as you look at it again there's Walton See, at that point right there it doesn't look to me like he has firm control of it right he's, he's not even looking at the ball it's like in two hands and it's kind of he's kind of losing it to the right side of his body. And I think right there I think the ground helps him make the catch. Well, you can always look for the moment where there's separation of the hand to the ball, and you will see it just for a moment right there. You see that right hand? Watch the right hand, and there's a moment of separation. 
It's also, you know, making sure that he got that foot down in bounds when he made the catch because that his left leg, when it comes to the ground, was very, very close to the white line as well. And that might be something they're looking at too. Here it is again with Walton. So he has possession, but where's that? Okay, well, the, the right foot came down first, so he would be in bounds, but the question is, did the ground help him make the catch? Correct. I think the footwork is, is clean here with both the right and the left, but then the, that just that moment of potential separation, and then when the ball hits the ground, watch the right hand. Right there. Yep. You need indisputable video evidence to have to overturn this call. Great work by our crew, as has been the case all season long, including the crew up here in the booth with a birthday lady, J.J. Jacqueline Jameson, the best in the business. Brent used to always say that, right? Yeah, Brent Musburger called J.J. the best stage manager in the business. He was absolutely right. She makes it such a joy. Looks so much forward every single week to coming here working with this crew, but J.J. is just a ray of sunshine every single weekend for our crew. Veteran of these SEC booths, and a happy birthday to Jacqueline. And also a, a great getaway driver. Which will be happening in five minutes. As they wait for things here. You know, I'm just reflecting on the fact that Auburn at least was passing the ball. Auburn at least was passing the ball on that drive. A lot of these fans are sitting back saying, couldn't we have just done this earlier in the second half? Give us a chance. Yeah, listen, it's one thing to, to not call throws down the field because you know you don't have a chance to do it and you just feel like it's obligatory. You just gotta, you just have to throw it up down the field at some point and just see what happens, but. After video, the video, review, review, the ruling on the field stands. <laughs> Auburn is charged with a timeout. They will have two remaining from the half. They have also use their challenge for the game. And remember, that was the ruling on the field. So when you get the ruling on the field, they want to have that clear video evidence, and they felt they did not. Hugh Freeze feels otherwise, and we showed you an angle that would make you question that, but it was a really good play by Walton on the ball, and they are celebrating over there, ready to run out this clock with a two-touchdown lead, number 13 team in the country, who will have Thing in for a soft landing. This guy, Jackson Dart, their quarterback, has been sensational in this fourth quarter. He really has. And I think his composure really has sort of bled out into his team, too, because they were struggling in the first half, Joe, with turnovers, giving up big plays on defense, penalties, special teams miscues as well. They weren't handling the environment here at Jordan Hare, but Jackson Dart kept great poise and composure here in the second half. Made some big throws down the field, made some big runs as well down in the red zone and, and out in the field. He's kind of settled and, and this team has really rallied around him here late. Dart with the two touchdown runs and the touchdown pass tonight. Coming off the bye week, everybody said, you know, it's good to have him off the bye week, healthy as Bennett takes it here. And Katie, it was good for him to get back home and have a little fun. Yeah, it was. During the bye week, he flew home to Utah to go on an antelope hunting trip with his dad, Brandon. The two have been hunting together ever since Dart was about six years old. Dart said hunting and fishing are his escapes. It gives him a chance to decompress, live in the moment, void of distractions. He says he finds peace in that. And when he returned to Ole Miss after he and his dad got two antelopes, by the way, he was refreshed and in a really good headspace that carried into this week of prep, you guys. Yeah, we asked him, he said, Jackson, what do you do with that meat? He says, hey, the back strap is really good, but you got to season it. <laughs> I said, my man, here's what you need to do. You got to call up Chef Currents. You got to call John Currents and get a good recipe for antelope loin. City, city grocery? Yeah. Yeah, big bad breakfast maybe. Oh. Kind of dial it up. Third down and 11. Nowhere to go here as they just run off some clock. Well, I think Ole Miss came into this one knowing that this, there was going to be a tall task here, facing an Auburn team that just got blown out by LSU on the road. They were hungry to take the field again, but they were going to have to deal with this environment. And if you're Ole Miss, when you take a look at the schedule, you know, you don't have time to worry about Alabama and what other teams are doing in the SEC. You've got your own business in hand. And big one here tonight, Texas A&M coming up too, and then a massive game on the road at Georgia. But without Brock Bowers, if he's not able to go, yeah, that's a game I feel like Ole Miss can win. Oh, anything can happen in this league this year. That has been proven. Timeout. Timeout's going to be used here. 
We'll take a break. Ole Miss trying to bring this home back to Oxford with a W. They're not going to be rolling Tumor's Corner, but it's a beautiful view tonight. Next Saturday, SEC Network, Command Center, South Carolina A&M, Mississippi State here at Auburn and Vandy Ole Miss. Mississippi State won 7-3 to three today against Arkansas. Without Will Rogers, a quarterback, it was Mike Wright getting it done, throwing and running on the ground. So, you know, Auburn, a team that needs three wins to get to a bowl game, that is critical for them to get the extra practices, help develop this team. Their best chance of getting those three wins of the stretch of games they've got coming up here before they play Alabama. There's more from inside the 35 yard line. Final two and a half minutes in front of us as the college football rankings are brought to you by Chick-fil-A, Jesse. Any given Saturday, anybody can go down. North Carolina did to Virginia. Penn State obviously lost to Ohio State. Oklahoma was living very dangerously. Could have lost to UCF. Florida State in a dogfight right now, trailing by three. Ohio State. And the way they've looked here in recent weeks and with their resume, having won at Notre Dame and then beating Penn State today, if they take care of business next week at, and the first college football rankings come out, I'll be pretty surprised if Ohio State is not number one. Mayan Williams had a touchdown run for the Buckeyes. McCord went for 286 and a touchdown. Defense played exceptionally well. As Thorne is going to be taken down for a sack. That was Ukwo. Who was involved there? There's Pete Golden, his first year as the DC for Lane Kiffin. He actually came up 
under Ron Roberts, the defensive coordinator for Auburn. That was the early stage of Pete Golden's career. He played for Ron Roberts at Delta State, was a, was a safety for him, then he GA'd for him, then he was the DC for him at Southeastern Louisiana. So they spent six years together yeah, opposing DC. And, and it's been a, it's been a good kind of cat and mouse game watching these two defensive coordinators game plan today and call plays. Pete Golden's been great with his timing on when to send pressures and mixing up the personnel. He's been dialed in. Really shutting down Auburn here in the second half. Of course, platooning quarterbacks for Auburn as Thorne trying to stay upright and taken down by Cedric Johnson. So let's look ahead when it comes to the schedule. Well, we talked about Ole Miss. They, they need help right now in the SEC West race. They need Bama to lose twice. Of course, Bama's getting ready to play LSU here in a few weeks, so that's big. But you, know, you can never overlook Texas A&M and their physicality. The big one, obviously, at Georgia, but you don't know the status of Brock Bowers and that injury. If, if he's not playing, that's a game Ole Miss can win. And then at the end of the season, the Egg Bowl, of course, they lost last year to Mississippi State, but you know, Will Rogers, a quarterback, banged up right now. You just got to focus on yourself and handle your own business if you're Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss. And I think coming in here tonight into Jordan Hare, a place where they've struggled as of late, they'd lost eight of their last nine, and see the way that they responded as poorly as they played in the first half to bounce back and Obviously, Jackson Dart's been terrific, and the defense has shown up. It's been pretty impressive. And to that point, it's an Ole Miss program now that can win in different ways. Right. Right. Because you, you get this image of Ole Miss and Lane and the play calling, but they can win football games in different ways now with where he's got things. Fourth and 15 after the timeout, as Thorne will get it complete to Hunter. And extend things downfield and kept his balance. And as the ball came out, they're saying he was down, but they're able to convert on a fourth and 15. That was a great throw by Peyton Thorne. He's got the true freshman, Santaren Perkins, right in his face as he's kind of falling away to his left. He wasn't even able to get his shoulders around. Nice job making the catch by Hunter, and there's the speed. Thorne taken down again by Cedric Johnson. He's their active career leader in sacks. Well, we talked about Auburn now having to build each and every week and try to find the positives when they're lacking so much in the passing game. And think about their schedule coming up and who they've got. They're, they're, they need three wins left. And, you know, you look at Mississippi State again. We've talked about the issue. They've got a quarterback right now with the injury at Vanderbilt, at Arkansas, New Mexico State. This is kind of the window right here. These are these are all winnable games for Auburn. You brought up the history of Ole Miss playing at Auburn. Lane Kiffin mentioned it in every comment he had this week. He said, I know what they looked like against LSU, but when you go to that place, this place right here under the lights, it gets tricky. And it was tricky for most of the night with just the energy, the defense, the miscues, the crowd. But here they are ready to make some history is Ole Miss because back-to-back -back wins over Auburn hasn't happened since 52. And they had lost eight of their last nine here at Auburn. I think Lane Kiffin said in an interview earlier this week, we like making history at Ole Miss. We like doing fun stuff, breaking streaks. They're able to get that done here. Caleb Burton with the reception. Third down for Peyton Thorne as he gets the in cut to Fairweather, and it's a first down. It'll be first and goal for the Tigers. Listen, you got to put some bricks into the foundation of confidence with the passing game. Yeah. Even if it's this kind of a moment, trailing by two touchdowns with a minute to play. Thorne goes right back to it, and stretching out is Fairweather for a touchdown. Nice job by Fairweather. There he is, 250 pounds, and great location on the throw by Peyton Thorne, putting it right into the body between the one and three on Fairweather's jersey. John Saunders Jr. doesn't have an opportunity to defend this because there's no defense for a perfect throw. Back-to-back -back plays, the exact same route, dialed up. Really, Peyton Thorne's look good here, spinning it around these last two drives. Obviously, too little, too late at this point feels like but with this extra point one possession to go crazier things have happened here at Jordan Hare late 56 seconds remaining 
We'll set up the onside kick in moments so the flag comes down on that extra point. After that touchdown drive by Auburn. Offside on the defense number six lined up in the neutral zone. That penalty is declined. The try is good. The UCLA Stanford is coming your way. And then next Saturday in prime time, it'll be Tennessee and Kentucky. And Colorado and Coach Prime are at the Rose Bowl on ABC next Saturday night. Colorado will be coming off the bye week. For all those fans that left Jordan Hare early, I wonder what they're thinking now because yeah. it felt like Auburn was was left for dead here. Just a few. Good looking drive Peyton Thorne finding some throws a big one to Jarquez Hunter. And they're an onside kick here away from being back in business. You think of all the magic that has happened in this stadium all the craziness that has gone down late. Anything is possible. Isn't that the truth. Place that has produced. The prayer of Jordan Hare, the kick six. Is there a little magic left tonight on a night that seemed hopeless just moments ago with a dormant passing attack? And now here comes the onside kick. They bunt it straight ahead, and it is fielded cleanly by the Rebels. So Ole Miss will put this game on ice with that effort on special teams. And it looked like it was Dayton Wade. You've got your hands team out there, and you've got a receiver and a punt returner. And Dayton Wade, this took, this took a really clean bounce on the bunt right up into his face mask. You got to catch it and get down quick. Now, here's the interesting thing. That type of onside kick is typically used as a surprise onside kick when the when it's a return on when they turn their backs. Mm -hmm. If you know the bunt's coming, if you got the hands team coming, the bunt is typically not used unless you slam it right into that front line. The level of onside kick analysis yeah, now, please. Right now is yeah. fantastic. All those years of S second second level. I mean, just off the charts. Jackson Dart is going to take a knee after a night when the Auburn defense gave him a few roadblocks, but then he found his stride, had a spectacular touchdown run on a fourth down, managed things so well in the fourth quarter. And the number 13 team in the country that historically has struggled here at Auburn had lost eight of their last nine. It was Hugh Freeze, the head coach at Auburn now, who had the lone win in recent years back in 2015. And now Lane Kiffin will come across the field and shake hands with a victory here at Jordan-Hare. Judkins finished with 124 yards rushing and a touchdown run. Katie. Thanks, Tess. Lane, overall, that was a dominant second half. How would you describe the response you saw from your team after some early ups and downs? Well, I'm proud of our player. It's awesome for our fans to come in here and win. I mean, it's been 71 years since we beat those guys in back-to-back -back years. So and now we don't play them next year. So proud of our players. Thank God for putting this team together. And they really worked hard in the bye week. Jackson Dart finished so strong. What impressed you about his play late in this game? I mean, he came through and in with Trey Harris with big plays and ran the ball and then cue to end it running there. Obviously, we would have liked not to give up that last score, but proud of our guys. Again, this is a very hard place to win at night. Thanks for the time. Congratulations. All right, guys. Thanks. He mentions Trey Harris. Harris, the wide receiver for the Rebs, finished with 102 yards receiving. You know, he's, he's been saying it all week, Joe. You know, at the end of the day, coming together, playing together in difficult situations in hostile environments, that's something Ole Miss was able to do tonight here at Jordan-Hare. Jackson Dart stepped up, made some big plays late. The defense had massive moments as well. This was not an easy win. This will be a great ride back to Oxford. Just the fourth win ever for Ole Miss here at Auburn's Jordan-Hare Stadium. And back to back over Auburn for the first time since 1952. 28 21 is the final. Let's get you back to the studio and Matt Berry. Have a great night, everybody.